Hi everybody and welcome to the fifth lesson of this Arduino course. You know, last day we learned how the photoresistor works and today I've brought two new components. One is a push button, this one, okay? You can press on it. I will explain to you how it works later. And the other one is the buzzer, which is an electrical device that makes sounds. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's begin with push buttons, which are more complex than buzzers. This is a push button and it has four legs, 1B, 1A, 2B and 2A. 1B and 1A are always connected to each other, no matter if we are pressing the push button or not, in this case it is released, and 2B and 2A are always connected to each other as well. However, side number one is not connected to side number two when the push button is released. When we press it, we are connecting side number one with side number two, so the four legs are connected to each other. Let's see an example. I'm gonna place a push button here and an LED here. So from here, we're gonna go to ground pin and from here, to the 5 volts. So as you see, it goes this way, 5 volts to row number 9, it goes to the anode, then it goes to the cathode, but now it cannot go from these terminals to those ones, so the LED wouldn't work. However, if we press the push button, it does work. Actually, we need a resistor, but this is only an example, because the, the current can continue until ground, so the circuit is closed. We're going to try the circuit here. We have the Arduino board, the breadboard, LED, resistor, push button, and some jumpy wires. So let's place the push button here. Now the LED, now a resistor, and a couple of jumper wires. As we have the anode here, this goes to the 5 volts, and from this side to the ground pin. Let's connect it, and when we press this, it should work, and it does, all right? So when we press, the electricity can go from that side to this side, and it works. And now we're gonna make a similar program, but instead of using an LED, we're gonna use a buzzer. As you see, it has two legs, but one of them is longer than the other one, so this works as an LED does. This is the anode and this is the cathode. So this one has to go to the 5 volts pin and the, this one has to go to the ground. So let's place it. In this case we do not need a resistor and only by pressing here it works. We can also connect a push button as we did with the photoresistor so that Arduino detects when it is pressed and when it is not pressed. So that is very useful to code any program. Remember in a photoresistor, one leg went to the ground and from the other leg we had one wire to the analog pin and another wire via resistor to the 5 volts. In the case of a push button, instead of going to the analog pin, we have to go to a digital pin and it will detect if it is high, number one, or low, number zero. But if we connect it this way, when it is pressed, it will consider it low and when it is released, it will consider it high. In my case, I prefer that 
when it is pressed, it considers it high, not because of the height of the button, but because high is usually number one, is on, is working. And low should mean it's not working, it's zero. So, the only change we have to do is the following. From one leg, this is gonna go to five volts. And from the other leg, one is going to go to a digital pin, number seven, for example, and via resistor to the ground pin. So the push button is here, as we said, one cable to the five volts, another cable to a digital pin, number seven, for example, and another cable via resistor from the same side of the, of the cable which goes to the digital pin to the ground pin. So now let's connect it and open in block five. Let's add Arduino as usual. And we're gonna test it in a very simple way. Let's connect it. Let's go to pin and take read digital pin seven. Let's go to live mode. And if I click here, it says O or zero. This means low. However, if I'm pressing it, when I click here, it says one or high. So now I can connect here the buzzer. This leg is gonna go to a digital pin, number six, for example. And the other one is gonna go to the ground pin. So now the buzzer is connected to digital pin 6, the push button is connected to digital pin 7, so it's very simple to code it so that the buzzer works when we press on the push button. And to make it more interesting, this time we're going to upload the code to Arduino. So we're going to work on upload mode. The only event we can use is when Arduino starts up and we'll do this forever. If read digital pin seven equals one. So if we are pressing push button, we're going to set digital pin six output as high. So the buzzer is gonna is gonna ring, is going to go off. And if not, we will set it as low. Now that we have created this, we have to upload it. So we have to click here on upload and wait until this process is finished. Once it is, we can check it. As you see, whenever I press, this push button sounds. And now as we have promised, we're gonna make a simple timer. So. First of all, we have to detect when the push button is pressed and released. And when it is pressed and released, the timer should begin. So what we can do is this. When Arduino starts up forever, if digital pin seven is high, so if we're pressing it, we're going to wait until we have released it. So we will use this, wait until read digital pin seven is low. So when it is pressed and then it is released, the timer should begin. And now we have two options. One option is use this, 
wait for 10 seconds and then set digital pin 6 as high and the buzzer would, would sound. But another option, which is a bit more complex, but this way we're going to learn something different. Arduino has its own timer, so we are going to reset the timer, so the timer will be uh, at zero. And we're going to wait until this timer is more than 10. I say more than 10 because I want to make a 10 second timer, but this is up to you, okay? And after that, we're going to set digital pin 6 as high. But this is not going to end here, because if not, the buzzer is going to be ringing forever. So, we wait for one second, and we set it as low. Let's upload it and check it out. Now that the code is uploaded, let's check our 10 second timer. As you have to wait for 10 seconds, you could use this time to subscribe. As you see, it does work. We could modify this code to make a sound which is much more similar to an alarm clock. My proposal is this one. And now the code is uploaded, let's see how it sounds. I hope you guys liked this video and learned how to use a push button and a buzzer. As you see, this is a very simple timer. Too simple, actually, because you cannot choose the number of seconds you want to wait once the code is uploaded to the board, but that's something we will do in the next video. So see you there. Bye bye.